Valediction, Forbidden Morning. This poem seems to tell us that even though we all die, there is no need to weep if someone loves the dead one, because our refined love makes the perfect circle as the compass does. Though we did not notice it, love is very important. I think this poem uses unique metaphors and wrings my heart. Very simple and clear. Okay. Uh, 정지야. Uh, 정지야. Valediction, forbidden morning. Uh, it is an interesting point because it forbids morning uh, in a situation where two are parting. Even it is uh, handling a sad situation, it writes down uh, in a soft, gentle way. It sometimes sounds beautiful. It says that a physical parting is not the true parting, and they will be together spiritually, so there is no need to be said. And since it is written in the annotation that Don wrote this poem for his wife before he left for France, I think all of it makes sense. Very clear and very easy, right? OK, Hangugin. Uh, each full line stanza is quite unadorned, unadorned, uh, with an A B A B rhyme scheme. A valediction is very simple, and the nine stanzas of this valediction, at this poem, are quite simple compared with many of uh, Don's poems. Uh, this poem creates a dichotomy between the common love of the everyday world and the un uncommon love of the speaker. Uh, 내가 볼때이 마지막 phrasing 있죠? 여기만 발견되는 게 아니고 다른 사람한테도 있었어. 그럼 뭐예요? 인터넷 봤잖아요. 그러면 안 되지. 그러면 보는 건 좋다 이거지. 그 코테이션을 해야 돼. 어? 소스를 밝혀야 돼. 소스 밝히면 아무, 아무 문제가 없다고요. 그죠? 그래서 코테이션 할 것. 음. 근데 한국인 어, 이게 내가 첫 번째로 읽었기 때문에 오케이를 줬어. 다음에 읽었으면 안 줘. 왜냐면 요거 플레, 플레이스 이거는 훔친 건데 도둑질인데 도둑한 도둑 도둑질한 사람한테 오케이 주면 안 되잖아. 큰일 나잖아. 그죠? 앞으로. 그래서 요걸 이제 나는 한번 결정을 하면 안 바꾸거든. 그러니까 운 좋게 제일 첫 번째 오케이를 받았기 때문에 그냥 지나간 거야. 뒤, 뒤 사람은 이 똑같은 어, 프레이징을 썼고 못 받았어요. 왜냐면 여기 인터넷에 따왔기 때문에 한국인 운이 좋은 거예요. <웃음> 응? 응. 자, 오케이. 자. 어, 다시 한번 얘기하면 나는 학점을 안 바꿔요. 그러니까 내한테 뭐저 올려주시 하는 거는 안 돼. 그러니까. 결석하지 말고 과제물 다 내고 그 다음에 시험 다 보고 부지런히 해가지고 오케이 받으면 되는 거지 그 다음에 이제 전체적으로 봐가지고 어, 퀄리티가 처음에는 떨어졌는데 어, 전체를 다 봐요 내가 폴다 다 가지고 있으라고 그러잖아요 그 이유가 어, 잘하는 사람만 A 플러스 받으면 안 되잖아요 그죠 못하는 사람도 어, 나름대로 열심히 해가지고 실력이 어, 눈에 띄게 좋아졌다면 A 플러스에 그, 그러죠 그냥 그 다음에 글 쓰는 사람은 뭐예요? 잘 듣는 사람은 무조건 A, A 플러스야, 내 반에서는. 그, 뭐, 행실이 못 돼, 그건 상관없지. 나는, 나는 재능을 곱게 여기니까 무조건 A 플러스. 그러니까, 어, 뭐, 시아나, 뭐, 아주 스프로박이 있었다 하면은 A 플러스. 사람이 완벽할 수는 없거든? 제주, 나는 그 제주 인정하고 싶으니까. 아, 이수요? 어, Valediction. Uh, this poem is about the power of the complete and mature love. The love is compared to the twin compass. Even if they have to say goodbye for now, it doesn't mean their love is over. Like, a com like the compass, uh, they can always find their way back to love. Uh, uh, 이 서머리가 아주 간결하게 잘 됐어요. 물론 이거 저기 좀 부족해. 왜냐하면 
그 자기 말로 원래 써머 있는 모든 걸 자기 말로 리프레이징 해야 되는데 어, 여기저기서 따왔거든 키워드는 그러면 그거 이제 코테이션으로 쓰면 전부 다 코테이션을 해야 돼 코테이션 다음 문장 코테이션 다음 문장 이런 식으로 대한 이거 그냥 여기저기 따 가지고 짜집게 한 건데 어, 다음에는 내가 서머리 하시오 하면은 자기 말로 쓰세요 조금 틀려도 상관없어 그러니까 자기 말로 쓰고 그 다음에 아 이거 정말 내가 리프레이징 할수 없다 내 말로 풀수 없다 하는 걸 뭐예요 코테이션으로 해서 인용하세요. 조금 인형이 그어도 상관없어요. 이를테면, 올브라이트 교수 있죠? 책을 이제, 다음 책이 이제 내가 이제 곧 번역 시작할 건데, 그 책이, 그, 네오나르도 다빈치 아시죠? 다빈치. 다빈치 몰라요? 엄청, 엄청난 화가잖아요. 그죠? 과학자, 뭐, 저, 해부학, 뭐, 이런 거. 인체를 어떻게 한줄 알아요? 그 당시에 시체를 파헤쳐가지고 하면은 아마 사형? 엄청, 엄청난 중벌이 떨어져. 그런데도 불구하고 뭐야. 밤에 조사하고 가가지고 시체를, 어, 무덤에서 꺼내서 그거를, 어, 해부, 보고서 해부를 해가, 해부를 하고, 해부도를 그렸어요. 굉장히 그, 그, 과학적인 사람이죠. 근데 그 사람이, 예, 뭐를 글 썼냐 하면은 풍경화 그리는 법. 그죠? 풍경화, 랜스케이프. 풍경화 그리는 법을 갖다가, 어, 적었어요. 근데 그게, 어느 문장 하나를 뺄 수가 없어요. 굉장히 긴 문장이에요. 근데 그걸 이제 대, 대개 이제 인용할 때 다섯 줄, 뭐, 뭐, 스무 줄 이상 인용하지 말라 이런 스탠다드가 있어. 그걸 깨버린 거죠. 이 사람은 인용이 한, 한 7페이지인가 돼. 7페이지, 8페이지, 한 10페이지 될 계속 인용이야. 그러니까 지금 이 시를 보면 알겠지만 파격적이야. 그 문법 다, 문법을 완전히 깬건 아니고 접속사 없어. 카마, 카마, 카마 전부 연결되어 있어요. 한번 보세요. 세미콜론은 무작위 많이 썼고. <웃음> 그, 어, 자기 말로 이, 어, 써야 돼요. 그 인용이 조금 길어도 상관없다. 자, 이거 한번 읽어볼게요. John Donne by Frank c o m e r Sections, sections, as you can see, sections one, two, three. This section deals with the general background and understanding of John Donne. The introduction emphasizes the importance of John Donne's work. And how he's been received by people and critics. Very clean. 아주 깨끗하죠. 문장이. John Donne was often misunderstood and undervalued and was thought uh, to only serve the myth of the dis dissociation of sensibility. Uh, Elliot g a m a n d m a dissociation of sensibility. He is being revalued in more, uh, in uh, more uh, 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 presentation. Frank c o m o d then gives facts about the background of John Donne. Uh, Rose, uh, okay. <웃음> 문장이 조금 연결이 안 돼가지고 그만 읽겠어. 그 다음에 uh, 변주환. s u m m a r 잘했어요. s u m 는 지금 두 사람만 받았어요. 어, 구경모, 구경모, 낙토노, 낙토노 upon Saint Louis Day being the shortest day. It is the poem written by John Donne, and it talks about the speaker's feeling of the loss of his love. Then he goes on to give advice to other lovers. I like the way he is talking about the main theme, love and the loss of it. I was able to feel his uh, inner sadness of losing someone and quite impressed by the fact that he got me, got me care about his own feelings. Hmm, okay. 모승주. Uh, this poem is about love and loss, uh, dark, dark, darkness and light, the opposite thing we can observe during a normal day. The concept of Shodish Day informs the idea that actually there is always going to be a regeneration of springs that will uh, uh, take, take on life. Um, okay. Mm. 이수영, 낙토노. The poet's love is dead, but the poet is not devastated uh, by the fact. Rather, he is he is ruined by his love. But midnight passes, and a new day comes. Uh, as midnight comes, a new day comes. 
his third love will be born again with the poet's spiritual love. Thus, the poet's canonizing his, his poem, uh, his love. Unlike the last line, okay? Genji one? Okay. Dito and Nosubin? Uh, yeah. Nosubin? Okay. Uh, the poem is talking about uh, St. Lucy's Day, uh, which is the shortest day with the longest night. I found the concept of rebirth is interesting and how people can be back to spring again after rebirth. The poet seems to be optimistic in this sense also, etc. Begiju? Nocturnal. I really got impressed with the expression that uses seasons to describe our lives. Uh, though I'm in spring or summer now, it must be very short, uh, etc. Hong Munya? Nocturnal. There are many paradoxical and opposite images in the poem, but Don puts them together, making them coexist. Overall, the speaker seems to be in despair and grief, using words such as dead and interred epitaph with dark death controlling his mood. Moreover, the whipping creates a flood which exemplifies the feeling of the speaker's mourning of the onward death. Nevertheless, there are hints of rebirth in spring which comes after the winter and how the, how the love is immortal, alchemy. These contrasting images evoke even shorter, sharper feeling of absence, emptiness, death. This made me think about the different forms of love and what See, uh, season, time of day could express it. The love in this poem seems so great, even divine. Good, this is good. Han uh, Dong-gyu. This poem, nocturnal upon St. Lucy's Day, being the shortest day, seems to be an allergy thinking of a, a, a possibly uh, John Donne's wife's death. One main idea, of the poem is death. Don uses words like uh, spent, shrunk, to remind readers of the image of death. The other main idea is resurrection, which is shown in words like next world, uh, next spring, and so on. Comparing two main ideas, death and resurrection, Don successfully sublimates, uh, sub sublimates his sorrow of loss of his wife into love. Two ideas, very good. Idea is good, right? Ideas. Kim hyung Kim uh, This is a uh, very unique, uh, it's a very unique style. Chan right? uh, Dan sings a poem with a disappear. I felt that this poem has a strong and extraordinary darkness, atmo dark atmosphere. I can see lots of words like darkness, emptiness, nothingness. The most impressive sentence is, I am begot of absence, darkness, there are things which are not. He expresses a strong compromise and an earnest desire. He uses a seasonal concept uh, in this poem. Uh, it is pretty interesting and uh, uh, the countries are very memorable. Okay. Kim nan uh, Nocturnal. In the poem, the poet sings about being void in misery. He claims that he is, uh, he is every, every dead thing, and that he is uh, unhappier than everything in the world, etc. And uh, Chang, Chang, Chang Seong Yun? Okay, good. And, uh, okay. Kim Nan Yo? Uh, this is a poem, beautiful. Song in the Woods, Song in the Woods. Uh, it, this is depiction of a painting, right? Which painting did you see? Did you go to the Chuang Bang Which one? Which, which painting did you see? This, this is about... Oh, okay. Where to the soft wind blows, Wafting the, the scent of the mellow sun inspires a 
wise man a gentle sprawl, where to the yonder river flows, and winding nine curves of its way, brushes up against the sun-warmed stone. The song of peasants rustles a tall clover blossom as wildry cares wash down in peace. Hmm? The images, right? Okay. Good morning. Uh, we are going to study a, a new poem by John Donne. Uh, the title of the poem is The Flea. It's quite interesting. Uh, the poem is about, uh, not about the uh, uh, insect, the, the hopping insect that uh, feeds on the blood of humans and animals. Uh, it, is a, it is actually about uh, the uh, uh, love between men and women. Very interesting poem, right? And uh, I'm going to read the poem with you, okay? The flea. Mark about this flea and mark in this, how little that which though denied me is. It sucked me first, now sucks thee, and in this flea our two bloods mingle be. Thou knowest that this cannot be said, a sin or shame, nor shame, nor lost the maidenhead. Yet this enjoys before it ooh, and pampered the swells with one blood made of two. And this, alas, is more than we would do. Oh, stay, three lives in one flea spare, where we almost, ya, yeah, more than married all. This flea is you and I, and this, our marriage bed, marriage temple is. Though parents grudge and you, we were met and cloistered in these living walls of, walls of jet, though use make you apt to kill me. Let not to that self mother added be, or and a sacrilege, a sacrilege, three sins in killing the three. Cruel and sudden, hast thou sinned to purple thy nail in the blood of innocence? Wherein could this flea guilty be, except? in that rock which it sucked from thee, yet thou triumphed, sashed, sashed that they, thou, thou, foundest not thyself nor me, the weaker now. Tis true, then learn how false fears be. Just so much honor, when thou, thou yieldst to me, will waste, as the fleas that took life from thee. Uh, uh, we have to go back to the uh, very beginning. Uh, read it very slowly, paying attention to the uh, syntax, right? Uh, mark about this flea. Mark. Mark. Uh, these days we use mark it up, right? Uh, uh, mark. Uh, notice, right? Notice this flea. Uh, look at this flea. Look at, look at this flea. It is mark, but this flea. And mark in this, mark, mark is a transitive verb, so it must take a, um, a noun or a object, right? So mark how little that which thou denied me is. You denies me that, right? You denies me something, you denied me something, right? Which uh, thou denies me, thou denies me is a parenthetical, right? So, which is, how little that is. How little that is. How little that which thou denies me is. Uh, so, the poem is addressing whom? Maybe his lover, his love, right? Woman, his woman. Uh, she's going to kill the flea, uh, right? But mark but this flea and mark in this. How little, how little that which thou denies me is. <clears throat> it sucked me first, it sucked me first. Uh, and now sucks thee. And in this flea, our two bloods are mingled. Inversion, right? In this flea, our two bloods are mingled. Great. So, the flea is what? Medium, right? Right? 
And uh, there's an inter interesting concept, of course. Uh, there's footnote four. Look at footnote four. Look at the bottom. The footnote at the in the bottom, at the bottom. Medical theory, medical theory of downtime, uh, held that, thought that, in sexual intercourse, blood was uh, literally mingled, uh, leading to procreation. So they thought blood, uh, when, when, when they have sex, uh, bloods are mixed, and it becomes baby. Right? So this is the, uh, 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 the medical theory of the time, right? The flea symbolized this mingling, right? This flea symbolized this mingling, okay. So back to the uh, stanza two, mm, okay. Um, thou knows that, thou knows that this cannot be said a sin, sad to be, eh? Sad to be a sin, or, nor shame, nor loss of maidenhead. Uh, this cannot be said sin or shame, nor nor shame, nor loss of maidenhead. Yet, this enjoys before it oo. This enjoys before it oo. Uh, enjoys. It seems it seems like uh, seems like a intransitive verb, right? This in enjoyable. Right. This this is uh, before it oo before before it oo, and the pampered swells pampered swells pampered swells uh, with one blood pampered swells with one blood made of two uh, one blood made of two bloods. Uh, you're talking about the uh, bite, right? It becomes swollen, right? Swollen. So after the bite, right? And this, alas, is more than we would do. Uh, also, uh, this means what? Pregnancy. Woman uh, who is pregnant, pregnant, who got pregnant, become what? Get bigger and bigger, right? <laughs> Swell, swell, right? All right, so. Uh, pampered 12 with one blood made of two. This, alas, is more than we do. Oh, stay, 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 wait, stay. And she's going to kill it, right? She's going to kill it. <laughs> and stay, stay, oh, wait, stay. Three lives in one flea, spare, spare, space verb. Stay, spare, two verbs, right? Stay, spare, three lives in one flea. Actually, uh, in one flea, there are three lives. Hmm? Me, you, and the flea, right? Uh, and another one is coming, the baby, maybe, <laughs> right? So, three lives, right? Three lives in one flea, spare, okay. Uh, second line, where we almost, we almost are, what? Yeah, more than married, we are more than married. After marriage, what happens? Uh, you have a per first night, and then you will give a birth to a child, right? More than, right? Okay. Uh, uh, where we almost, yeah, more than uh, married are. This flees you and me. This flees you and me. And this, the verb is, right? Uh, and the next line, at, at the end of the line, there is verb is. This is our marriage bed. This is. Uh, this is our marriage temple, right? So, this, our marriage bed, and marriage temple is. Is it, it a, a lot of things are uh, uh, compressed in it, right? Right? So, uh, this and this, our marriage bed, this is very good, this, our marriage bed. Without verb, it's, it's an emphasis. This, our marriage bed, and this, marriage temple, and the verb is, right? Uh, this, is, this is our marriage, marriage bed, and this is our marriage temple. Prosaic, right? right? Though parents garage, parents garage, complaining, right? They, they complain, right? Though parents garage, and you, 
we are met. You, you, and we, you, addressing what? His woman, or, uh, or the flea, maybe, flea. You, we, are met. Right? We met, right? Met in cloister. The cloister, what, is a, what does cloister mean? Cloister, cloister, uh, in, the, uh, in the hallway of, of a church and things like that, cloister. But here is it's, it's a verb, right? We are met and cloistered. We are met and put in these living walls of death. We are met, meaning what? Insi inside the flea, right? right? We are inside. We are met and cloistered in these living walls of death. Though youth make you have to kill me, though, <coughs> though <coughs> youth make you have to kill me, uh, maybe uh, this is what? Maybe the flea is addressing to the woman. Wait, let me leave, right? Though youth, uh, there's footnote five. Uh, youth means habit. Hmm? Though habit, habit, uh, <coughs> make you have to kill me. If you find the flea, you, you, you uh, <coughs> used to kill it, right? Kill me, let not, let not to that self-murdered had it be. <coughs> There's inversion, in, inversion here. Let, uh, let not self-murder be added to that. Okay. Let not, uh, let not uh, self-murder be added to that. Uh, understood? And sacrilege. There are uh, three sins in killing three. Uh, it's not good, right? If you kill uh, three sins, you, you commit three sins if you kill, right? Uh, in killing three. Still the three. Cruel and sudden. Cruel and sudden. Uh, look at the, uh, what, what part of it is it? Adjective, right? If you say cruelly, suddenly, the nuance is gone, right? Cruel and sudden. He's going to uh, say something about it, and this cruel and sudden. The mother killing is, is, uh, is sudden. Right? If you say cruelly, suddenly, you expect verb, but without verb is perfect, right? Cruel and sudden, comma. Right? Hast thou, hast thou, since uh, purple thy nail in blood of innocence, purple. Purple, what kind of verb, uh, is, it, uh, is it adjective or what? It's verb, purple, right, purple, good. Hast thou since purple thy nail in blood of innocence? In blood of innocence? He took this phrase, blood of innocence, blood of innocence, right? So, hast thou since purple thy nail in blood of innocence? Impressive, right? Blood of innocence. Flea is innocent, right? He, he just uh, bit, right? You and me, a little bit, of, right? But purple, killed, right? If you kill, kill, kill a flea with a nail, it becomes your, your nail, it uh, becomes dirty. Purple means red, right? Uh, in, in the, in, at, at the time, when uh, Don lived, purple meant what? Red, right? not purple. Today, purple is purple, right? Uh, uh, bluish red, right? Purple. But uh, at, at the time, it meant red. So it's, it's a verb, right? It's a verb, right? Purple, hast thou sins, purple thy nail in blood of innocence? Wherein could this flea guilty uh, be? Uh, where uh, this uh, flea could be guilty, 
No, question, is it a question? Except in that blood which it sucked from thee? Except in that blood which it sucked from thee? Uh, look at the uh, next conjunction, yet, yet. So he's going to say something else. He is going to um, uh, express his opposition to it. Hmm? He is opposed to it, right? So, yet thou triumphest and say that uh, thou findst not uh, thyself nor me, the weaker now. And she's saying, right? Thou triumphest and seest that uh, thou findest you. Uh, the speaker is addressing the woman. You triumphed. You won, right? And uh, you say that uh, you you don't find yourself or me, right? Or the weaker now, right? Uh, she doesn't think that uh, 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 killing the flea will make us weaker. She doesn't understand, right? So. Uh, semicolon. T is true. T is true. Uh, then learn how false fear be. Still, th this is uh, this is what the woman has said. And after semicolon, look at this. This is not what she said. This is the speaker is saying, right? From here. After the semicolon, just so much honor and the verbiage uh, will waste. So much honor will waste, as this flea death took life from thee. Because uh, this flea death took life from you, right? Uh, 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 so much honor will waste. When thou yieldst me, when thou yieldst me, uh, the conjunction is a problem, right? When thou yieldst me, so much honor will waste, contradictory. So conjunction must mean something else. What does it mean? Qualifying conjunction. A conjunction that qualifies. Though, although. Right? When. When means though. T H O U D H. Though. Though uh, thou yieldst me, so much honor will waste, as this fleece that took life from thee. This is an unusual poem, and an extra, extraordinary poem, right? This is, one, this is probably this one of the most famous poems in uh, English literature. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll go through the whole poem. The flea. Mark but this flea, and mark in this how little that which thou denyest me is. It sucked me first, now sucks thee, and in this plea our two bloods mingled be. Thou knowest that this cannot be said as sin, nor shame, nor loss of maidenhead, yet this enjoys but it woo. And pampered swells with one blood made of two, and this alas is more than will do. O stay, three lives in one flea spare, where we almost, yeah, more than married are. This please you and I, this our marriage bed, and our marriage temple is. Though parents grow, and you, we were met in cloistered in these living walls of death. Though you make you apt to kill me, let not to death self murdered murder, and it be, and sacrilege, three sins in killing three. Cruel and sudden, hast thou sinned, purple thy nail in blood of innocence, wherein could this flea guilty be, except in that blood? which is sucked from thee, yet thou triumphst, sayest that thou findst not thyself, nor me, the weaker now. Tis true, then learn how false fear be. Just so much honor, when thou yieldst to me, will waste as this flea's death took life from thee. Uh, we have covered an, a long essay by uh, Frank Comor, uh, that is a very good essay, and uh, Frank Kermode, Kermode uh, uh, I think he's that, uh, he, is, he was one of the greatest scholars, Renaissance scholars, and Sir Herbert Grierson is also great. If you read it, the style is wonderful and brilliant, and uh, it, his essay is full of uh, ideas and insights, and you'll see, right? So, let's go to the essay, the handout. Sir Grierson, 
Herbert, Herbert Creation, Tan and Metaphysical Poetry. Uh, there's footnote. From Sir Herbert Creation, Metaphysical Poetry and Poems of the 17th century, published in 1921, uh, 1959, reprinted by permission of the publisher, the Crown and Press, Oxford. So this is very, uh, this is very old essay, but uh, this is wonderful, right? Metaphysical poetry, in the full sense of the term, is a poetry which, like that of the Divina Commedia, the De Natura Rerum, perhaps, created Faust, has been inspired by a philosophical conception of the universe and the role assigned to the human spirit in the great drama of existence. These poems were written because a definite interpretation of the riddle, the atoms of Epicurus, rushing through infinite empty space, the theology of the schoolman, as elaborated in the uh, catechetical uh, uh, disquisition of St. Thomas, Spinoza's, Spinoza's vision of life, uh, subspecie uh, deteri, deternitatis, beyond good and go, good, good and evil, uh, laid hold on the mind and imagination of a great point, unified and illuminate, illumined and uh, comprehension of life, intensified and heightened his personal consciousness of joy and sorrow, of hope and fear, but by broadening their significance, revealing to him in the history of his own soul a brief abstract of the drama of human destiny. Poetry is the first and last of all knowledge. It is uh, it, as immortal as the heart of man. Do you agree? Its themes are the simplest experience of the surface of life, sorrow and joy, love and battle, the peace of the country, the bustle and stir of town, but the equ equally the boldest conceptions, the profoundest intuitions, the subtlest and most complex classifications and discourse of reason. If into these two the poet can carry sensation, make of them passionate experiences, communicable and vivid and moving imagery in rich and varied harmonies. He's talking about metaphysical poetry. It is, no such, it is no such great metaphysical poetry as that of uh, Lucretius uh, and Dante that the present essay deals with, uh, which this volume seeks to illustrate. Of the poets from whom it calls, Don is familiar with the definitions and distinction of the medieval scholasticism, Coley's bright and uh, alert, if not profound, mind is attracted by the achievements of uh, science and the systematic materialism of Hobbes, Don, and, and moreover is metaphysical and not only in virtue of his scholasticism. But by his deep ref re reflective interest in the experience of which his poetry is the expression, the new psychological curiosity with which he writes of love and religion. The divine poets who follow Don have each the inherited metaphysical, metaphysic, if one may so call it, of the church to which he is att attached, Catholic or Anglican, but none of the poet has for his main theme a metaphysic like that of uh, Epicurus or Saint Thomas, uh, passionately apprehended and immersively expounded. Don, the most thoughtful and immersive of, of them all is more aware of uh, this integration than of a comprehensive harmony of the clash between the older physics and the metaphysics on the one hand and the new science of the Copernicus and Galileo and uh, Thessalius and Bacon on the other. You know, I'll skip. The greatest report indeed of the century or believed himself to be a philosophical or a theological poet of the same order as Dante. Paradise Lost, John Milton's uh, poetry, uh, was written to be a justification of the ways of God to man, resting on a theological system as definite and almost as careful, carefully articulated in the De Doctrina Christiana, uh, Christiana as that which Dante had accepted from the Summa of Aquinas. 
And the poet embodied this argument in a dramatic poem as vividly and intensely as, and conceived and as magnificently and harmoniously set forth as the Divina Commedia. But in truth, Milton was a, no philosopher. The subtleties of the theological definition and inference inf uh, infer infer eluded in uh, his uh, rationalistic, uh, practical, though idealist mind. He proved nothing. The definitely stated argument of the poem is an obvious uh, begging of the question. What he did was to create or give a new definiteness and sensible power to a great myth which, through his poem, continued for a century or more to dominate the mind and imagination of pious Protestants without uh, many of them suspecting the heresies which lurked beneath the imposing and dazzling poem in which, uh, in which are told the Bible story of the fall and the redemption of man. So uh, creation is uh, what puts uh, John down above John Milton, right? John Milton, uh, Milton was simply a poet, but this is, uh, this but John Donne is uh, more than a poet. He, uh, he is a philosopher, right? As well, okay. Metaphysical, uh, in this large way, Don and uh, his followers to Coley are not. Yet, the word describes better what is the peculiar quality of their poetry than any other, for example, fantastic, Four, poetry may be fantastic in many different ways. Whitney Skelton and the Elizabethans and Hood and Browning. It lays stress on the right things, the survival, <coughs> the survival, one might say, the uh, re-accentuation of the metaphysical strain, the uh, conchati uh, metaphysici et uh, idealis as Testi calls them in contrast to the simpler imagery of classical poetry, of medieval Italian poetry. The more intellectual and less verbal character of their wit compared with the uh, conceits of the Elizabethans, the finer psychology of which their conceits are often the expression. Their learned, image, learned imagery and the argumentative subtle evolution of their relics above all, the peculiar blend of passion and thought feeling and ratiocination, reasoning, which is their greatest achievement. Passionate th thinking is always apt to become metaphysical, proving and investigating the experience of, from which it takes its rise. All these qualities are in the poetry of Don. Don is the great master of English poetry in the 17th century. Okay, I'll stop here, we'll continue, okay.